merch. Auto Trader. GWM is a brand on a roll at the moment with sub brands like Haval and the soon to be introduced Aura all electric brand as well as this P series. It is certainly outdoing itself in terms of sales within the local market. And today we're driving its new flagship bucky, the P series Limited. Now, for those of you unaware, the P-Series was introduced a couple of years ago and it has really taken the more budget-friendly double cab bucky segment by storm. In fact, here at Auto Trader, we've got an Ask Auto Trader question section and I'm involved in it. And a lot of the questions I answer are to do with a lot of Chinese brands, but often when it comes to buckies, this is the bucky that people are asking about. They want to know whether it's worth buying or not. And well, now that we're driving this flagship model, it's just under 700,000 Rand at the time of recording, 694,995 Rand to be specific. That means that it's moved up a price point. It's no longer the budget friendly Bucky it once was, but in place of its budget friendly roots, it's now got a load of specification. And this particular limited model has got a ton of specification additions that make it a proper off-road ready Bucky. So what do you get with the P-Series Limited? Well, from an exterior perspective, there's a lot. Not only do you get 18 inch alloy wheels with Cooper all-terrain tires, you also get steel front and rear bumpers that are more off-road friendly. You get plastic cladding on the side that make it more off-road ready in terms of the way it looks. You get a black sports bar, you get black roof rails and you get a plastic load bed liner as well. In addition to that, there is also a snorkel fitted to this car. Moving inside, we also have a variety of new options that have not been seen on the P-Series before. Chief among is a new selectable four-wheel drive system, which includes a low range function, but the big benefit of it is now you've got a front and a rear locking differential, which makes a massive difference when heading off of the beaten path. In addition to the off-road ready goodies and the aesthetic package, this is quite a well specified bucky in terms of just creature comforts. We've got things like heated leather seats. We've also got a seven inch touchscreen infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto functionality, a fully digitized uh, instrument cluster over here and we've got a raft of semi-autonomous driver aids which mean that at this price point this is pretty much the best specified bucky for the money that you can buy in the market right now so now we've given you a breakdown of what the p-series has to offer in this flagship guys but does this bucky have what it takes in terms of the drive quality and in terms of its general market offering to tempt buyers out of things like a Mitsubishi Triton or a mid-level or mid-spec Toyota Hilux, Ford Ranger or new Volkswagen Amarok? It's what we're here to answer. Well, I can tell you I've covered about 600 kilometers in this car so far and I have thoroughly enjoyed my time with the P-Series Limited. I think that as an overall package, it gets the job done very nicely. Now, engine is the same 2 liter turbo diesel as before, produces 120 kilowatts and 400 newton meters of torque. It's paired to a very nice eight speed automatic gearbox and the aforementioned selectable four wheel drive system that is new to this particular variant. Suspension, you get that typical bucky bounce. Now, obviously it's hard to avoid in a bucky, but I wouldn't say it's Mazda BT50 hard, but it's not quite as supple as some of the newer double cabs within the market. But more than livable, something that you can certainly get used to and certainly something that is not jarring or unexpected from a bucky. If you're an existing bucky owner, it's not gonna matter too much to you. It's only if you're transitioning from a regular passenger vehicle where you'll really notice the rear end when it's unladen, being a little bit skittish over bumps and providing that bounce when you're driving on a on any surface really. Let's get into the likes and dislikes of the P-Series. Well, the first thing I like is the value for money that this car offers. At under 700,000 Rand, you also get a five year, 100,000 kilometer warranty and service plan, which is great value from the brand. These cars seem to be relatively robust as well. They seem to be well engineered. I like the fact that 
GWM are bold enough to come in with a product at this price point and offering this much specification. I think it's a good move for them. And I think the exterior treatment of the car looks pretty good. I think it's not over the top, although I will caveat that with the fact that I don't like the red brake calipers. But to take tips in terms of aesthetics from a man that's wearing a tea cozy on his head, I don't know, that's up to you whether you do that or not. But I don't like the red brake calipers on a double cab bucky. Other thing I don't like is this digitized cluster. You've got the ability to scroll through the cluster via buttons here on the steering wheel. But if you have the lane keep assist or even the adaptive cruise control activated, you cannot scroll through the menu. Now you might think, oh, just click a button to get rid of it. But no, you have to go into a sub menu in the infotainment system and deactivate lane keep assist, turn off the cruise control, and then you can scroll through all the functions. It's just irksome and annoying and it shows you that the system wasn't thought through as well as it could have been unfortunately the infotainment system it's definitely not class leading along with the sound system it really doesn't it's not going to set your world on fire but it gets the job done apple carplay works a treat android auto works a treat so that's pretty much all you need other areas that you'll be impressed with with the p-series is the way that it's put together the tangible quality and the materials for a bucky are very good this dashboard for example is soft touch something that you don't see often in a bucky this material over here is soft touch i mean there are areas obviously where there are some cheaper feeling plastics but overall this is a bucky this is a utilitarian workhorse type vehicle despite the fact that this is more skewed at the lifestyle double cab market but i have to say super impressed with this car problem is you cannot analyze any product in isolation it would be really great if we had something to compare the p series with Oh, isn't that convenient that we just so happen to have a Toyota Hilux with which to compare the P-Series. In all seriousness though, if you want to know what we think about this Legend RS derivative of the Hilux, we'll leave a link to our review in the description below. But now that we have a Hilux here, let's do a quick, um, quick fire comparison between this and the P-Series. Now I've driven the P-Series for the past few days, very impressive Bucky. Hopping into this Hilux now, it looks very good still for that P-Series. I don't see any areas inside this Hilux that make me think that it is any more valuable or any more expensive than, than the P-Series. So looking good for the P-Series. From a drive perspective in terms of comfort, well, they're pretty similar. Um, so looking very good for that P-Series. It's just shocking how far that the brands have come. Now, Hilux is, of course, a South African favorite. It is consistently among South Africa's best-selling Bucky. So it's good to have hopped in one and to have a bit of a comparison. But I have to say, if you drive a Hilux and you're looking to move to a P-Series or vice versa, the cars are very comparable from just the daily drive perspective. However, this is the 2.8 liter Hilux and it's got 150 kilowatts and 500 newton meters of torque. It's also more expensive than the P-Series, so you can't really compare them. But what would happen if we had to drag race the P-Series versus this Hilux? So let's see. So, we promised you a surprise at the end of the video, and we really wanted to test out this flagship P-Series, and figured the best way to do that would be in a drag race you know everyone likes drag races so we're going to compare the flagship p series with the flagship toyota hilux now these cars have got quite a big price golf uh, between them so it doesn't really mean that they're rivals but it's still going to be great to see how the two flagships perform against one another that hilux next to me is a 2.8 liter legend rs that produces 150 kilowatts and 500 newton meters of torque. It weighs about 1,900 kilograms. The car that I'm in, as I mentioned earlier, two liter turbo diesel engine, 120 kilowatts and 400 newton meters of torque. It also weighs a claimed 2,100 kilograms. So this is a very heavy car. I think we can guess what the outcome would be, but the only way to tell for sure is to actually test them out against one another. So let's see 
what they've got. Okay, so let's get this drag race on the road here. See if my colleague Lawrence is ready in the Hilux. Lawrence, uh, do you copy? Are you ready in that Hilux over there? Uh, yes, Sean, I am quite ready. So this first race, uh, no brake boost. Uh, this is just from a straight idle. I'll let you count it down, mate. Alrighty, we're gonna go without any brake boost. Okay, let's do it in three, two, one, go. Hell of a start. And the Hilux just bye bye P series. It's the Hilux. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's got me. So weird, there was a bit of a delay from the Hilux there on the start, but at the end it sort of came past. You can see where that extra 30 kilowatts and 100 newton meters comes from. Yeah, it was a slower start for the Hilux there, but it, it definitely reels the, the P-Series in. It's gonna be interesting to see with the brake boost launch. Absolutely, uh, let's head back to the line and uh, I'll count it off this time. Happiness. Okie dokie, so this is now the brake boost version of the drag race, just so that we can see once and for all which car is actually quick. I think we know, but let's let's give it a go. Copy that, all right, here we go. And we are depressing accelerator now. Let's do an off thousand RPM and let's go. Close. Oh, but there you go. <laughs> no, it's just pulling a gap now. That was a really good launch for both of us. Yeah, the Hilux has got it. Yeah, that was a that was perfect. I, I think we got off the line at exactly the same time, and we're sort of neck and neck for the first gear or so, and then. Yeah, the Hilux just shows uh, more power and torque there. This is my smug face. So there you have it. That is our drag race between the flagship GWM P-Series and the flagship Toyota Hilux. We hope that you really enjoyed that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel. Hit the like button if you've enjoyed this content. Let us know in the comment section what you'd like us to test or even drag race against one another next. And remember, if you're looking to buy or sell a car, search Auto Trader. Until next time, guys, cheers. Search Auto Trader.